was in the local high school here, and I started using marijuana, started using alcohol, and I started using nicotine. And because of that, and I'm not saying I'm glad for that, but, uh, but because of that lifestyle, through my high school years, there were, there, there were two things that happened to me. Number one, there was three words that would not leave me alone. Through my high school years, there was three words that would not leave me alone. And those three words were, what is life? What is life? Why am I here? The second one was, I knew I was a guilty sinner in God's eyes. I knew that there was a God. I knew that I had sin against him. It's just like when you look in the mirror and you see the red and blue lights. And you look at your speedometer and you see 125. And your heart sinks. And you know that you're, you're guilty of that sin, of that issue that he's behind you with. But it was the same with me. I knew that in God's eyes I was a guilty sinner. But I didn't know how to, how to change that or rectify that. I knew he loved me, but I just didn't know what to do. So uh, I made the choice of not going to university. And I was in high school. Ah, sorry, I was in the workforce. And I was at a party. 19, 20 years old. I was living with three friends. We were renting a three-bedroom house. And I was at this party. And it was a cold winter night, I know exactly, it was right down the road here. In fact, I think this block here. And it was an old brick house, and the floors were cold. And there was rock and roll music blurring from the stereo. And there was marijuana, nicotine smoke, and there was guys fighting over girls. And I remember my socks being wet because I was walking in spilled beer. And my feet were cold because the floor was cold. And I looked at this party, and I just went, this is not why I'm put on this earth for. And I just decided to walk home. And I walked home and I was walking down the back, I was taking the back alleys home and I walked down the back alley. It was a cold winter night, there was no clouds in the sky at all. And I was literally stopped in my tracks. I was walking down the back alley and I looked up and I just, wow, just the beauty of creation. And the stars and creation. And I, I see God. I just, in, in, the, in, the, in the creation, I see the creator. And I looked up and I'm like, wow, there's a God. This is not an explosion. Some, someone has made this. And I remember looking up and I, I remember realizing the vastness of, 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 this, of, of the distance. And I remember looking and I, I pretended I had a, grain, uh, a marble in my hand. And I said, this is my life on this earth. It's, it's a finite distance. Then when I die, then there's that, my soul. There's that, it's an infinite distance. That's, that's not right. I pretended I had a little bit of sand in my fingers. I said, this is my life on this earth. And right now, that grain of sand was the part of me I just left. And I said, that, this grain of sand is my life. And then when I die, then there's that. And I, I just, I had this conviction that God would not let me have both. I didn't know what said in the Bible. I didn't know what, I didn't know what, I didn't know what said in the Bible. I didn't know anything about the Bible. I was given one in confirmation, and that's as far as it went. It was supposed to put on my shelf, and to this day I don't know where it went. I didn't know it said he who has found his life is lost, that he who has lost his life for my sake is found it. But I just looked at the grain of sand and, and said, either I live for this life and lose that, or I live, I live for that and lose this. And I said, God, my heart tells me that you're there. If you show me what you want me to do, and if you show me people that love you, I will, I will become a Christian. That's all, that's all I knew then. I walked home, and I got home, and I laid in bed. And I knew that something happened. I just didn't know what. I didn't know God was knocking at the door of my heart. I didn't know he was standing in the river. And the funny thing is, within 20 minutes, I was completely sober. I laid in my bed completely sober, wondering what just happened. I started meeting Christians. I was, hit, uh, I was hitchhiking once. My, my friends were taking me to Regina Airport, and their car broke down, and I was hitchhiking. And I went up to the McCoon, I remember this very, very distinctly. I went up to the McCoon, McCoon turnoff. Stuck on my home, my, my thumb in a car cup. Got a ride, got a ride right to the Regina Airport, right to the door by a white man and his wife who were born again Christians. And I, I got to hear born again, I got to hear salvation. And I got, the, I got an invite to a church. Okay? That following winter, I was living in a, uh, a work camp up in, up in uh, uh, Devon, Saskatchewan. 
And the foreman did the, my bunk mate was a cool guy, and the foreman came in and said, we have to start working on Sundays. And uh, he said, no, I, I, I take my wife and my kids to church on Sunday, so I guess on Saturday I'll get my notice and I'll be done. And the guy said, no, 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 you, you can come back. Because he was a hard worker with an excellent attitude. And our foreman knew that. And he says, no, if that's why you're going, you come back on Monday morning. I looked at him and I said, what are you all about? Because I knew he was different. And I asked him why he become a Christian. And he told me that his, his wife said that she has to marry a Christian. And because you're not a Christian, I can't date you anymore. He said, what, what do you need to do be, to become a Christian? She said, well, you've got to come to church with me. And uh, he went to church with her and he went saved. He looked at me. He, he was telling me this story. And he looked at me and he said, uh, I'm not a good person, but I try. But I, God is with me. He said, if I go to sleep tonight and I die of a brain aneurysm and I don't make it through the morning, through the night, I know I have eternal life, but I'm a sinner. Don't get me wrong, I'm a sinner. But I know I have eternal life. And I said, you can't know that until you die. He said, yes, you can. You can know you have eternal life. A born-again Christian, and there's the born-again word again. Two words in one. The born-again Christian. So anyway, that man, God used that man in my life. I don't know who he is or where he is. But I believe I'm going to see him someday. I got in my car and I was driving back to Esther, and I just said, okay, why am I meeting all these Christians all of a sudden? And then I reflected back on that night in the back alley. I said, that's why I'm meeting all these Christians. I, I said, I've got to get away from Estadan. I've got to get away from my friends. I've got to, I've got to move to Victoria. I, said, I decided on Victoria, BC. Because I had no, no one out there that name except for one friend who just got married. So I figured that was pretty safe. His party day should be over. So I went out to Victoria. And from the moment I got into Victoria, the devil gave me life in a silver platter. I got a job within two or three days, a good paying job that I allowed. Uh, an apartment four blocks away from work opened up. I got an apartment, I had a motorcycle, I had a car, and I met a girlfriend. All within about a month. And I didn't know what was going on, but the devil just gave me life on a silver pile. And guess what? Because as a sinner, I forgot about my commitment to God. And I forgot the reason why I went up to Victoria was to uh, search for him. And the next thing I know, I'm not searching for him. But guess what? God didn't. I forgot, but God didn't forget. Amen. And I talked to my girlfriend in the morning, and I said, well, the meaning of life and about God and about how I And she said, whoa. I'm um, not into that. And the relationship ended, and I got hurt. I phoned up my brother one night. I was hurt and lonely. I talked to my brother. I phoned up my brother, and I talked to my sister-in-law, and she got on the phone, and she said, you got to get back to Esther. I'm saved. I've been born again. You come to church with us. Whoa. There's another one that I know this time. <laughs> Didn't even get to talk to my brother that night. Just pound up the phone and quit my job. And within two weeks, I'm, I'm back in Esteban. I was at a, a man's living room. And he said, Ken, he says, you're having a hard time. You've been having a hard time on Victoria. And I said, yep. He says, can I read the word of God to you? And I said, yep. He says, he says this, this is God's here. This is God's here. <laughs> Says in John, he sat down and had a cup of coffee and he had his, his living room set. And he read this verse. It says in John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give eternal life to them, and they shall never perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. Those words went into my mind, my, my eyes were digested by my brain and went to my heart. And the only way I could explain it was a powerful conviction come over, over me that said, these are my words. This is my truth. And I started praying. And I heard the gospel that afternoon. And I heard if you confess with your mouth, Jesus says, Lord, and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you shall be saved. And I heard, I heard things like, like laying up treasures in heaven. That night I went to a Bible study, or the, night, the next night I went to a Bible study, and I, I, seen, I seen people that, that love God. I seen real Christians. After the Bible study, I have lost, lost track of time. After the Bible study, I try to end this here. 
after the Bible study, I, I went to uh, an elderly woman, invited me over to her place for, for a coffee. And uh, I, I went to her place. Some of you may uh, know uh, this name. Her name was Grace Raw. Before the Lord took her, she was a woman of God. And I went to her place. And she said, Candace, has, has anyone shared to you what, 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 what you need to do? Do you want to become a Christian? I said, she said, are you a Christian? I said, no. She said, would you like to be, become a Christian? I said, yes. And she said, have you been explained through the Bible what you need to do? And I said, yes, I need to confess it with my mouth. His Lord, and believe in my heart, I need, to, I need to accept him into my life. She said, yes. She, she stuffed on some cookies. And she stopped on the coffee. And I grabbed the cookie and I started to eat it. And she turned around and she sat down with her coffee pot. She said, can we just wait on, on, getting, on eating? You want to pray? <laughs> pray for a cookie. <laughs> and she prayed. And I'll never, I'll never forget this. She started, and I heard this, oh God. Oh God, thanks for this food, amen. And I heard this, oh God. God, I want to thank you for this young man tonight. I want to thank you for Ken. I want to thank you for pursuing him. And I looked at her. And her face was, it was, her face was like this. And her hand was like this. And she was praying. God, I want to pray for this young man's salvation tonight. Wow. And God told my heart at this moment, that back out to this moment, which just led me to, the, to that very moment. If you show me people that love you, if you show me what you want me to do, God showed me that I was supposed to be there that night. We went into a living room. I prayed to receive the Lord. And God saved me that. Amen. I thank you for that. I know I'm God over. I want to just end by, I want to end with my life first. I lost track of time here. I don't even know what time I started. And I'm sorry. I want to end with my, life, with my life first. And after I got saved, I started to walk with the Lord and I got set. And I got set for about 15 years. And I, I seen a man get killed on, killed on a job on a construction site. And I ended up getting post traumatic syndrome. I couldn't sleep for years and I was shaking and quivering. I started to use alcohol to calm my nerves and I started to use alcohol as a painkiller. And I didn't want to become a hypocrite, so I put it in the church. I was very, very discouraged and I was very distraught. God kept me. God kept me the whole time. But this verse is the reason for that. One of the reasons for that. As a young man, this verse ripped my heart. And it just never let me go. It just. This is my life first. And I thank God for it. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. For three years in high school, what is life? What is life? What is the meaning of life? This is it. If you don't know what it is, I'm telling you this is it. But just as it's written, things which eye has not seen, and earth and ear has not heard, and which have not, and which have not entered in the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him.